Welcome to Jackie's Reviews. I'm going to do a book review on the book called The Lost Boy. This is the second book in the David Felzer, I think is how you say his last name, series. This book series is like his memoirs of what happened to him in his past. I would definitely not read this book until you have read his first book, A Child Called It. You should read that book first before reading The Lost Boy. That way you understand what he went through as a child before he was able to escape his house and be put into the foster care system because I think it is really important to see what he was going through in home, in his birth home, before reading about what he's going through uh, in the foster care system. So... In this second book, David gets rescued, he goes to the hospital, he gets an evaluation, he gets put in temporary foster care, it talks about how he goes and see a psychiatrist, and now let me tell you, I have seen a psychiatrist. I have gone and seen therapists for my anxiety. The first therapist, or psychiatrist, however you want to phrase it, who sees David, is a terrible human being. This guy doesn't even know David's real name and all he does is just bring up terrible memories of what his mom did to him when he was under her care still. So instead of letting David open up and talk about how he feels or what he's thinking or you know whatever he's just like well how did you feel when your mom like burnt your arm and when this happens it kind of triggers David not to only think about you know his mom burning him but his mom like making forcing him to eat like dog crap and like all the other terrible things his mom did making him wonder you know just go down this this path of all these negative thoughts and feelings with no way of resolving them or anything. He's just a very, he's a terrible doctor or psychiatrist, however you want to phrase it. It's just awful. Now, David, he doesn't get to stay in one foster home, right? He goes to foster homes where the foster parents are like abusive to each other or they argue all the time. He goes to ones where they have like just like too many kids and the foster care house gets shut down because of like false accusations. He goes to kind of a place, I think they call it the hill if I remember correctly. And it's, I don't want to say it's like juvie, but that's in my brain I kind of equate it to juvie, like juvenile hall. But he actually likes it there because it's extremely structured and he knows what he's supposed to do, where he's supposed to be, at what times. So he does actually enjoy living on the hill to an extent, but he does get excited when he gets out because he gets to go back to, you know, a family that he likes. If I remember correctly, David goes between like six or seven different foster homes between the time he is rescued from his mother's house to when he turns 18 and you get to experience all of this through David's eyes he writes about how he is feeling what he's thinking you know the disappointment of his dad never coming to see him because that's something too so he's sitting around you know waiting for hours and hours and hours for his dad to come and show up and his dad doesn't call his dad never shows the foster care people can't do anything about it because it's not within their control so it's just, it's, it's really good. You also get to see the prejudice that foster cares went through during that time. Now, I will say that even when I was in high school, there was a group of kids that were like foster care kids. And I never really thought anything of it. Like, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But I do remember other people in high school making the statement like oh those kids are like the foster kids they live like out in the country in the trailer park or some crap like that and it was like well does that like you know to me I was like does that really matter like is that a big deal but it's like a stigma and I don't necessarily think it's that bad anymore but you see the stigma here 
in his story and you see how people acted back then towards him once they found out that he was a foster care kid they basically treated him like he was a vi- like not a villain but like a, a criminal like he was just like this bad kid when he didn't do anything now david does do bad stuff when he is younger like between like 10 and 12 or 13 because he gets to that point like when his dad doesn't go to see him anymore he kind of gets like well I don't care and to make friends he goes into like convenience stores and he steals candies and toys and stuff like that because he wants friends he wants people to like him and I mean obviously he gets caught and you know stuff happens but I won't give too much away I would highly recommend this book. I think it is a really good story. There is a lot of ups and downs in it. Like you think he's in like a good foster care home and that everything's going good, but then something happens and it's it really shows the struggles of the foster care system again. This book was done, or this happened like 20 some years ago. So this isn't what foster homes are like now. And there are some great foster care homes and there are some absolutely terrible foster care homes. I don't wanna be like, it's hit or miss, but I mean, it's not all sunshine and roses. And this is just part of David's experiences. And I think it's great because I get to see David, you know, improve himself and see him strive and do good for himself as he's growing up. And it's it's a true story. The last book, I think it's the last book in the series, is A Man Called Dave. I haven't ordered it yet. I haven't read it yet. But I'm planning on eventually. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you liked the review. And uh, thanks, thanks for watching, guys. Bye, everyone.